blaming God for Satan's attacks? Many people have misunderstandings about God's providence or trying to understand, like, how do I know when it is God's providence that is intervening for something that is going on? Or how do I know that God isn't punishing me? Or if God is happy or unhappy with my life or my decisions and um, whatever that looks like. So today we're going to be shedding some light on the subject of specifically God's providence and knowing his will and his plan for us. And um, so, but before we do that, I want to introduce myself. My name is Enoch Leffingwell, and here at the Army of Youth, we are passionate about helping young people to identify their unique talents and to dedicate them to the Lord's service. And today, we are going to be delving deeper to understand God's providence for each of us and how He works in the lives of others. A lot of times, there is um, often the uh, what happens, we see that there is habits there are habits of, of alcohol and, and drinking and abuse and, and poor intemperate habits that is causing disease that brings upon humanity. And then many times there has been um, children and babies who have been fed terrible food or they have not been taken care of and they, and they get a disease and they die at an early age. And then there's a question of trying to reconcile God's providence with that disease. But... Had, was it according to God's providence? No, it's because of going contrary to God's providence that people that the babies are dying at an early death. In fact, Ecclesiastes chapter 15, 26, God promises that if we obey his laws and we follow his voice and his words, then he won't put these diseases upon us that he's brought upon the Egyptians. And um, in Ecclesiastes 7, 17, there's often this idea that, well, when it's my time, it's my time. When I die, I'm going to die. And that's just when the good Lord decides to take me away, he's going to do that. But Ecclesiastes 7.17 reveals to us that through wickedness and wrongdoing, we can actually die before our time. That God has a time for us, but we can actually shorten our lives by disregarding his laws that he has provided for us. But we think at the hand of an enemy, but in reality, it is because we are going contrary to the decisions and the will of God. And, uh, and to charge this, uh, the, these early deaths upon God's providence is blasphemy. This is not the will of God that people should die or perish early. And um, a lot of times there is, when trying to understand uh, God's will and, and know like what is this what is his will for us it's important to know that God has made us free moral agents so often when we are praying for God's will we want to do his will we want to follow his plans but what happens is we are praying to God for guidance but he um, and then we're waiting like Lord if you would just make the decision for me or show me a sign or show me something that would like compel me. It's like we want God to force his will upon us. But is God ever going to force his will? No. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 tells us that God lays before us blessing and cursing, life and death. And he says, choose life that you might live. And we have the choice. And what we do with that choice is, is going to make the difference where God doesn't use an external force. He doesn't compel our minds. And what I would suggest is a lot of times we get hesitant, we get paralyzed with this idea of trying to understand what is the perfect will of God? What is the ideal option? Or, or like there's this belief that gets lodged in our mind that there's only one possible option or choice, one decision that could be God's perfect will. And if, if we do any slight variation, then um, we are not following God's will. But and so we, in efforts to not want to, <coughs> excuse me, in efforts to want to avoid making the bad wrong mistake or doing something that's going to lessen our effectiveness or effectiveness in in the Lord's service, we end up um, being so paralyzed and not wanting to make a decision or not knowing which one to make because we don't want to live with the. Um, I remember not wanting to live with the results of making the wrong decision. So so much worry about making the wrong decision but in all reality when we are praying for god for guidance first corinthians 3 verse 9 tells us that we are co-laborers together with god that we have a part to play not only should we pray but we need to act out our prayers we have a part to play in understanding the will of god and following his plans for us so in 
the endeavors to do this, we have to recognize, like, um, one thing that confuses people too is John 14, 6. The Bible says that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. So there is one way, and it is Christ's way. It's Christ's method alone that's going to bring true success. But, and we're just like, well, what is Christ's method? I find a lot of times people say that Christ's method alone is um, is to do um, like the healing ministry work. Or Christ's method alone is to do door-to-door, house-to-house evangelism. That's the only way to reach souls. Or Christ's method alone is to, um, to be in this specific form or style or method of ministry. But I would submit to you, what if there are multiple... Uh, possibility or possible um, applications, how we can apply Christ's method to our, um, how we reach out to the community or cri- apply Christ's method, how we build a uh, online community, or even could there be a way that we could apply Christ's method to um, reaching people door to door, or even Christ's method in publishing, or Christ's method in being a gospel entrepreneur, or being Christ's method alone in whatever lawful calling of life. A lot of times we're paralyzed because we think there's only one way, one method, and and if I deviate at all in this possibilities of my life and God's will for me, then I'm just going to bring this wretchedness or less joy or happiness or fulfillment in life. But I would submit to you, what if God has given us his laws, his word, that when we go, that God is asking us to do things that are in harmony with the principles and laws of God, and if and within the will of God, which is his laws of God, that's Psalms 40 verse 8, then there are multiple options. And what if there are multiple or even many lawful callings that do not violate any of the principles of God that you can choose from? And if you choose any one of those multiple options, that is the will of God for you. What if God's will isn't just one specific possible choice for your life, but he gives you options under this umbrella of, of being in harmony with the principles of God. So if I wanted to be like a porn star f- for my calling, my career, my employment, that violates the laws of God. That is, goes contrary to the will of God. That is not his will for my life. But if there is something that I want to do, maybe as a carpenter or as a mechanic or as a publisher or as an influencer on social media or sharing... <coughs> Bible worker or um, a healing gospel worker or a gospel entrepreneur, any of these things, if I'm not violating the laws of God, what if God gives us the freedom of free will, the ability to choose to um, make any of the decisions that are falling in harmony with one of those? Excuse me. What I would recommend is that um, in order to understand the will of God, we must saturate our mind with Bible truth. Try to understand and search the scriptures and fill our hearts and our minds. Excuse me, I need some water. If we can fill our hearts and our minds with the word of God on what it says about this specific subject or this topic, and as we are intentional with our devotions, and as we are seeking God's guidance in every area of our life, then we can um, know what is God's will for our life. And as long as it doesn't violate his will, <clears throat> then we can know. <coughs> Sorry, this is really bad. Thank you. Let me drink some water here. <coughs> Hopefully that's better. Um, I really believe that Satan likes us to be in hesitancy and indecision because indecision is a decision. And as long as we are confused on knowing what God's will is, then he is able to influence us and he is able to mold us in a manner that he wants to. As long, like We are always going to be in constant peril until we understand the true force of our will. He doesn't want us to hear this. Even the fact that um, there are influences that are causing distractions or wanting to prevent you from hearing this. But God has given his word and he has promised us victory.
and water is one of those things that he has provided. <clears throat> but um, but I, I want to say that as we study the Word of God and we apply his principles, then we can be sure that we are walking in harmony with the perfect will of God as long as it doesn't violate any of God's principles. But we can only know that when we are studying this decision, studying this calling, studying this area of our life that we're seeking God's guidance for. If you are interested in a step-by-step -step plan where you can understand how to be intentional with your devotions, how to search specifically for a decision, <clears throat> a difficult decision that you're making and something that you want to better understand, then I encourage you, we put together a four-part mini-series that you can go through so that your devotions can become irresistibly interesting because it's relevant to your season of life and the decision that you need to make right now. If you're interested in getting this free um, mini course, just go to the website, thearmyofyouth.com forward slash devotions, and you can sign up today. That's again, thearmyofyouth.com forward slash devotions, and you can get your four secrets to make your devotions irresistibly interesting and learn how to study the Word of God and search out the will in His Word so that you don't have to be perplexed. You can take out the mystery from God's Word and have absolute certainty and clarity that this is the way walk you in it. If that's something that you desire, I encourage you to go to the link below and uh, get your free training. And if you like this video, then um, go ahead and share this with someone else because sharing is caring. And if you have any questions regarding this, then feel free to leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, friends, that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called.